What's up everybody, we're back with another raid guide and today we're taking a look at the Stormwall Blockade on Mythic Difficulty. I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. And if you're watching this, I'll assume you're familiar with the heroic mechanics, if not, feel free to check out my heroic Battle of the Tsar lore guides. For this encounter you want two tanks, four healers and the rest a mix of ranged and melee DPS. Dot classes like Boomkins, Shadow Priests and Warlocks are great for this encounter. And if possible you want to have a Brewmaster Monk, Blood DK or even a Vengeance Demon Hunter to make Phase 2 easier. And at least one Frost Mage in order to control the adds in Phase 2. There's a few new mechanics in Mythic, or rather crossovers between Phase 1 and Phase 2. So in Phase 1 you will get the Sea Swells from Phase 2, and they work the same way as the Phase 2 Sea Swells. The boss will use Sea Swell, two seconds later they splash down and create a freezing tide pool. There's a few ways to deal with these, and I'll go over that in the How To portion. And in Phase 2, the Souls of Catherine and Jacob will assist Laminaria in the form of raid-wide AoE damage, the Voltaic Flash and Sirens from Phase 1. Voltaic Flash works the same way, spawns lightning beams, stand in them and you take damage, and the Sirens works the same way, however you get two of them each time they spawn during Phase 2. The Ire of the Deep now also knocks you back when you soak it. The knockback is split by every player that soaks, so more players, less knockback. And you can't immune the knockback, so even if you're an ice block, you'll still fly all over the room. And on top of this, if an energized remnant walks over a freezing tide pool, it will clear one stack of kelp wrapping per sec. So, how do we deal with all of this? In phase 1, you want to split up your raid evenly into two groups, just like in Heroic. We felt like it was easier to have more melee on the right boat and more casters on the left boat. The bosses still needs to reach 50% and then 0% at roughly the same time, and just like in Heroic, they have different health pools, so at one point or another, you might have to stop DPS a bit. Due to this, we had every DPS with a 3 minute cooldown on the right boat save their 3 minute cooldowns until Catherine translocates over and pop them at that point, but other than that we just tracked their HP and called for a DPS stop if needed. And because of the addition of sea swells in phase 1, space will run out really really fast unless you drop them off correctly. Now I've seen loads of different ways to do this, but I'll go over what worked the best for us. Starting off on the left side boat. On this side you start off with Catherine and her crackling lightning and voltaic flashes. For this side we opted to make it as simple as possible. We had one mark for sea swells that we used pretty much during all of phase 1 just in front of the mast where we have our skull mark. It's perfectly safe to walk into the old pools to drop off new swells. Doesn't matter if you have 1 or 20, they only do around 50k per tick regardless of how many pools are stacked. We stayed loosely spread at all time inside the healing rings and flows and all that good stuff, and as soon as one player got crackling they went to the opposite side of Skull and everyone else stacked up on Skull for Sea Swells. So at the start it'll look something like crackling, then Voltaic, then Sea Swells, followed by yet another crackling. To make all of this as easy as possible, we just face tanked the very first Voltaic Flash with a Disc Barrier or a Spirit Link. This made it easier to bait the first Sea Swells correctly due to everyone already being stacked in the barrier on Skull. And when Catherine starts to channel her empowerment, wait with interrupting a letter cast for roughly 15 sec or so. If timed correctly and if the DPS is enough, she won't use Voltaic anymore and just one more crackling which makes life a bit easier easier on that boat. Keep stacking your sea swells on one mark and make sure Catherine and Jacob hits 50% at roughly the same time. When Jacob comes over you kinda deal with it in the same way, bait any and all sea swells on skull, sea storms out to the sides of the boat, hard swap on the sirens and when Jacob starts to cast, wait until Laminaria has around 80-90% energy and then interrupt. Doing so means no more sea storms and no more sirens. Keep baiting sea swells and 
and make sure Jacob and Catherine goes down at the same time and then click the orb. And for the right side boat, we had one spot marked with an X that we used for all the sea swells when Jacob was up. Again, it's perfectly safe to walk into the old pools to drop off new swells. Doesn't matter if you have one or 20, they only do 50k per tick regardless. And we use the sides of the boat for any and all sea storms. So at the start of the fight, range and healers stood on the opposite side of the X mark to drop off the first sea storms, and then they moved over and stacked on X for incoming sea swells. The very first sea swells will always overlap with the second sea storms, so we just had those three players move out to the side of the ship to drop their sea storms and sea swells there. And after that, just rinse repeat, sea swell on X, sea storm on the sides, hard swap on the siren, and when brother Jacob starts casting his empowerment, do not interrupt him at all. Just let him channel that into the boss. When he channels, he won't use sirens or sea storms, so at that point just nuke and drop your sea swells on the mark. When Catherine comes over, you want to treat it roughly the same. We just changed it so that sea swells goes anywhere around or on X in that general area. As long as they're dropped in this area, you won't have any space issues. We sent any player with crackling lightning over to the opposite side of the X marker, and if this overlapped with sea swell, they dropped them there as well. When Catherine comes over, it's really just about staying alive. Make sure to use anything and everything you can to stay alive. Health stones, health pots, defensives, immunities, raid cooldowns, etc. Just stay alive. And when she starts channeling her empowerment, don't interrupt her until Lemon Area is around 80-90% energy, and make sure she goes down at the same time as Jacob. Phase 1 is really all about sea swell management and not running out of space. It's very healing intense, a lot more so than Phase 2, so make sure that everyone uses health stones and pots, defensives and immunities in Phase 1 if needed. You will not need them as much in Phase 2 as you do in Phase 1, so there's no reason to hold Hold on to them, just survive and have a clean transition to phase 2. And on that note, let's take a look at phase 2. So for phase 2, as soon as you've clicked the orbs and land on the phase 2 platform, you want the entire raid to stack max melee range from Laminaria, roughly where our moon mark is. Interrupt the boss when there is about one sec left and wait for the first sea swells. And as soon as the first sea swell spawns, range move to the bottom left side pillar, melee to the top left side pillar. Anytime Time sea swell spawns, move away and regroup at the edge of the old sea swells. Do not bait into an old sea swell in this phase. Anytime Voltaic Flash is cast, stand still and face tank it. Healers have healing cooldowns ready for each and every Voltaic Flash. Assign at least two DPS on orb duty, meaning when an ad dies, one of them picks up that orb, clears tide pools and drops the ad off. I recommend one or two demon hunters if possible for this due to blur and net their walk. Plus their overall mobility, otherwise boomkins, shamans, things like that works as well. We had our demon hunter stay on the adds that he spawned at all time. Add damage is nice to have and less back and forth for the demon hunter. A bit after the third add has spawned you will get a fourth add. Make sure to place that add on top of the third add so they can be cleaved and slowed together. Following this, the orbs that you get from these adds you want to place as far back as possible and keep them slowed. Depending on your boss DPS you may or may not need to kill them. When this happened for us the boss was at like 18% so we just ignored those adds, nuked the boss but obviously we still slow them. If the boss is a lot higher than 20% I recommend you kill these adds as well and ignore the next set of adds. And assign a couple of DPS to hard nuke the storm adds and the rest just dot them up and focus on the boss. For this we used two frost mages and everyone else as I said just kept all of their dots up on them. The frost mages were in charge of keeping the adds slowed at all time, blizzard when they spawn, cone of cold for that 85% slow, and just overall nuke them. The mages do not need to stack with the rest of the range, they should stand wherever they need in order to control the adds. And if you have an unholy DK or blood DK in the raid, they can and should use their super slow death and decay on the adds as often as possible. If or when an ad gets too close to the boss, all range DPS swap to it, just to ensure that it dies before ever casting. Remember, due to not interrupting the mini bosses in phase 1, the main boss will be on very high energy, so if an ad casts at all, you will wipe. 
and have everyone swap to the sirens when they spawn. If you only have like two free melee DPS, they don't need to swap, but if you have more, then they should. Just make sure to swap after a sea swell so you don't place them everywhere. The boss has got a huge, huge hitbox, so you can almost always hit both the sirens and the boss, so keep that in mind. And players that gets targeted by the sirens needs to check which one and move away accordingly. Grip them if they're about to get dragged off the platform and just kill the sirens fast. And for the ire of the deep soaks, in order to make this as painless as possible you want to solo soak all of these. This is why you want a monk DK or demon hunter tank. All of these can solo soak in fairly easy. Monks have their OP staggered, DKs has got an insane health pool which can be further increased if needed by using the talent Foul Bulwark, and Demon Hunters have a fairly high health pool as well and can have their talent Soul Barrier up for most of the soaks. Plus, mobility is really helpful, not needed, because you can do it as a DK, but helpful. So pretty much you have one tank on the boss at all time, and the other one is 100% soak tank. If you're the soak tank, your job is to never ever ever miss a soak, if you do, it's a wipe. Plan your cooldowns ahead for this so you don't die from a soak and make sure you never get knocked off the platform when you soak. You get knocked back really far, so don't have your back against the ocean. And for the Laminaria tank, pretty much stay alive, the kelp wrap dot will tick for a lot. You should try to always have 4 or 5 stack when a remnant ad comes within max melee range so you can get dispelled and debuff that ad as it gets close to the boss. But in between that you should also get dispelled so you don't take any unnecessary damage from the dot. And that's pretty much phase 2. Phase 2 is really all about ad management and not moving too fast with sea swells. As soon as you got a grip of how the ads work and how much DPS you need on them and when it's needed, the boss will die pretty fast. As I mentioned earlier, you want as little hard nuke on the storm ads as possible. You want them to die from the dots and you want them to always die just before they reach the boss. If they die halfway to the boss, then you've just wasted DPS on them, which is DPS you will need on them. The boss. So let the dots do most of the work on the ads, swap when they're close. Takes a few tries to get this under control, but that's really the trickiest part. That and people moving before sea swell spawns and people running off the platform, it seems to be a popular thing to do. Other than that, we used Bloodlust roughly 4 minutes into the fight when the demon hunters got their meta back and the DPS from the right side boat got their 3 minute cooldowns back. For us, this was during or after the second set of sirens. In phase 2. But yeah, manage the adds, don't lose players to the sirens, face tank and heal through the evil, take flashes and make sure you soak each and every ire. And I think that's about it for this encounter. If you have any questions at all, make sure to hit me up in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my Patreon if you'd like to support me and my work. You'll get access to my Discord where I post all our raid notes, healing notes, my weak auras and lots more, and it's the easiest way to get a hold of me fast. Of course I will still share this with you guys if you ask me for it, but as a Patreon you'll get access to this faster and at all time. And as always, if you like these kind of videos, hit that subscribe button, leave me a like and ring that notification notification bell and switch it to all. Thanks for watching and I will see you on Jaina.